This episode of the Sports Box is brought to you by Miked Up Entertainment and DJ Mike Velarde. For all of your event planning needs, make sure you contact Mike at 609-864-5925 and tell him that you saw him on the Sports Box. And we're on the air. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the show that continually breaks Dave Birnbaum's balls, and he likes it. This is the Sports Box. The only opinion that matters It's right here. I am Mike Galetta, a.k.a. Hans Mike, along with my partner, Brian, the Ranger of Tar. Brian, how are you today? You're still salty that he called you out for kicking field goals, aren't you? Well, uh, wait, wait till I run his ass down in the running camp. Oh, we're going to have soon. Oh, boy. Anyway, today we are going to talk those J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. With a guy in our town that loves the Jets, probably more than the Jets do. Let's talk to Matt Zuccarello. Matt, how are you today? Um, that, that might be the best chant we hear all year, though, too. So <laughs> that's like, oh, lost oh. some motivation already. Oh, we're going to have some fun with this one. So let's get right to it. Brian, stab me. Let's talk Jets. Ah, uh, so the, the New York Jets. Um, <laughs> you right? You can, get a pain over there? <laughs> what, is, what else can you say about this team? So they were 5-11 and 11 last year, last yep. place uh, in the AFC East. They did not make the playoffs naturally. Um, offensively, uh, you want to talk about a uh, plane crash. Mm -hmm. 26 overall offense in the NFL, 27 through the air, surprisingly 12th on the ground. Uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick, not good. Uh, 20 run at yards, 12 touchdowns, 17 picks. Usually if you throw more passes to the other team than in your own end zone. Yeah. And this is a guy who held out, who they battled right. to get. Right, right. And he brought him in, he still shit the bed. <laughs> not, not good, not good. Uh, the, run, the running game was, I mean, they tried to bring in Matt Forte to help that team. Didn't really do a whole lot. Uh, him and Bilal Powell, 800 and 700 yards respectively, combined for nine total touchdowns. Leading receiver surprise was Quincy Inunua, 58 catches, 857 yards, and four touchdowns. Wait, did you say Forte and Bilal Powell had nine touchdowns? Combined. Together. So an average of four and a half. I think we might have got more than nine touchdowns all year. That was a bright spot, though. Not, well, well, that was the bright spot. Actually, defensively, they weren't terrible. They were 11th overall, 11th against their run, 17th against the pass, and they added to that defense by taking Jamal Adams, the safety, uh, sixth overall at their spot. So and, I'm he, gonna, and they still won five games. And still won five games. But I'm going to start with that pick before we move on to anywhere past that. Are you surprised? The speculation was they might go quarterback in the draft. Well, they, they did not. Or does that surprise you? No, I mean, I'm actually happy they didn't. I mean, I wasn't happy with their draft picks the last two years of Petty and Hackenberg being drafted so highly by them. But, no, I wasn't surprised. I didn't, no one really stood out to me in college. Um, and Watson was, was decent for Florida. Um, I was surprised Chicago went really high with, um, see, I can't even remember his, his name, though, too. He's uh, oh, Trubisky. Um, yeah. But I, I wasn't surprised, though, too. I didn't think they'd go defense, I thought they might go offense, but definitely not a quarterback, so I wasn't surprised at that. I think the Jamal Adams pick was, well, with this team, I think there's, there's a, a big thing for a lot of needs. It, it was almost like a best available player at that draft. I think, though, you had to look at the future. They fought so hard last year to get a quarterback in here, Fitzpatrick, to kind of band-aid the season together, and when they got him in, it wasn't a good fit anyway. Um, you did bring in Hackenberg, you do have Bryce Petty, guys around for the future. Um, I, I think... Personally, the draft should have went more quarterback. Deshaun Watson was there at that pick. Maybe they should have took a shot at him. Um, where do, do you see this team, Matt, with any kind of direction? It doesn't seem like, you know, this year is obviously going to be you know, a rough year. It's going to be a very rough year for them. We can all, I think, admit that. This is but, not breaking news. No, it's not breaking. It's not sports by breaking news. But in the same sense, where's this direction for this team? Do you see them slowly rebuilding, or are they just all over the place with this team right now? Um, I had. This is the first year, probably, I could say, in, since I've been following them since the early 80s, that I don't even recognize more than 10 guys maybe on the roster. They really overhauled the roster. Yeah. I mean, huge losses or losses within the, this offseason. Yeah. You know, so that Eric Decker, Brandon Marshall, uh, Darrell Rivas, David Harris, these are all starters. Nick Mandel, their, their all pro center. Yeah. Uh, Giacomini, Nick Folk, their kicker, and Delvin Fitzpatrick. Smith, Delvin Smith out for the year with the ACL injury. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's just one thing after another, yeah. So, but I mean, like yeah. I said, do, do, they have, do you see any, any light at the end of the tunnel here for the Jets? For me, I, I'm more old school mentality. I want to coach like uh, maybe I'm dating myself like a coward or heard like a Gruden might come back. That would be something Sean Dark, because I, I don't like this passive type of coaches now. Rex Ryan was probably over the top, but now you have a passive defensive coach who didn't cut it in uh, Philly either, too, and I just, the guy shows no emotion on the sidelines, though, too, you know, and see, his name's even forgetful to me, to me, too, because that's how, that's how much that I don't, you know, seems like a decent coach, but just not the type of, to get the most out of Jets, and the, the defensive specialists, again, I want someone more like a Gruden or Coward type, 
to bring back and out of retirement. To, that would that would make me happy and get them maybe start in the right direction. With both starting receivers from last year, and I know Decker didn't play a whole lot. I know he got hurt, but he was the plan, you know, opposite Brandon Marshall. Um, I mean, is this too much of an overhaul too quick? And what I mean by that is, like you said, you can't recognize half the team, or more than half the team. Um, something tells me that it's going to be very easy to get Jets tickets this year, very very inexpensively, because not a lot to really get excited about. Hmm. But uh, what are your thoughts on them really just kind of wholesale blowing it up, the way that they've kind of done this offseason? Well, to your first point, I did check on tickets before. Preseason games, I've never seen it this low. $3 a ticket in a mezzanine in wow. the second level. So if you want to go to a Jets game, you're a Jet fan, um, yeah, by all means, $3 a seat, you can't beat that. That's a, for, even though it's preseason football, um, still definitely worth the price of admission there. Um, maybe not the talent, but um, with the overall, I agree to a certain aspect that uh, I actually like the, the total overall because why take it down piecemeal by piecemeal like all the franchises we've seen even locally since I moved down here like uh, um, like the Eagles have done or even the uh, 76ers. So I'd rather them start from scratch but another band-aid hiring uh, a 38 year old quarterback in Josh McNown um, who actually do like and I think might do okay but with the talent around him I mean your top receiver is going to be Quincy Inouye um, followed by uh, Robbie Anderson the only one that comes to the top of mind since a local kid uh, played for Temple um, but I don't see I don't see any talent that's on the offensive line, uh, the offense at all, that will actually, um, uh, and no standouts. The defense, though, they still have uh, Wilkerson, Leonard Williams, Sheldon Richardson, and Darren Lee to build upon. So the defense is always going to keep them in games. But I think offensively, they are severely challenged probably this year more than I've seen in the past 10 or 15 years. And it's funny, at first I was hurt when the Buccaneers released Sefran Jenkins to uh, you know, free agency. He landed with the Jets. But, yeah, well, two games suspension this year for substance abuse, I guess, why we know Tampa Bay released him. Anyway, let's go to the defensive side. You talked about Muhammad uh, Wilkerson. Uh, you know, poised for a big year. Been talking a lot in camp. He feels great. I think they're going to be a lot better than people say. Um, you know, I, I think that's a norm. You can't go into the season thinking they're going to be bad. Um, with the addition of Morris Claiborne, too, coming over from the Cowboys, Claiborne struggled last year in that Cowboys defense. I think, uh, you know, Brian will attest to that. Where do you think that the Jets have to go on defense to become a better defense than, than probably what they've had last year? Well, the, I actually I think their linebacking course is not going to be that strong. The only one that I see is Darren Lee that had a pretty good season last year. But other than that, they really need to rebuild um, a couple names that, like I said, I really haven't heard of. So. Um, that's why I did like actually their their safety pick in um, in Adams though, too at six. And they said actually he's probably might be the best athlete overall in the draft, you know, in a couple experts' opinions. But um, they really do need an overall from safety to linebackers to just they have some big names on the front end, you know, with uh, Leonard Williams though, too had a decent uh, year, you know, uh, not no major injuries, but they just. It's just they've never had a pass rush for the past several years or two, so I want someone to rush the quarterback and try to get a little bit of pass rush to, to make it a little bit easier on their, their linebacker core and their uh, their backs or two. Their, their as, a, as, a, as a fantasy side note, Chandler Ken, Ken Lozano came over from the Cardinals, so That's he could be a slight late pickup for you. He probably has got to get a lot of opportunities to honestly just well, drive. That, that's what they've done the past couple of years. I mean, that's what I was, that was my, you sort of stole my thunder there. <laughs> the two high, high, highlights, they could be a, a Kicking controversy, they also um, signed Ross Martin, a uh, yep. kicker from Duke. So between him and Kevin Zero, I think Mike, you might have a shot to make the team though too. If you want to see that, call the Jets on. Though, too. But it's yeah, close by too. I'm in. Yeah, they, but field goals, I could see them kicking a lot of field goals soon. Again, they might be in a couple games with the defense, but I don't see them scoring a lot of touchdowns again. So another long year, and I'll probably be watching more Eagle games and Jet games down here. Yeah, we've got to get the Sunday ticket, right? <laughs> now, they were a 10 win team just two years ago. What, is, what happened here that really just where the wheels came off this airplane, pardon the pun. Because, again, they won 10 games in 2015. They just missed the playoffs. That loss against the Bills at the end of the year really hurt them. But they brought back a lot of the same team last year. What was it that really just collapsed so much that this team went from a borderline, just missed the playoff 10-win team to, frankly, the same they're in right now? And just a little side note before you, get, before you answer that, you're talking about a, a quarterback Fitzpatrick who had a great year that year. Yeah. And then... You know, you think they would bring him back, obviously, for one more year or two years, sign a long-term deal. They both went butted heads. He kind of did the hold out. Finally came in, got what he wanted, and then just totally tanked. So, I mean. And that's just a tribute to see how many teams. He's been a journeyman. He's been, what, with seven, eight teams this yeah. year? Yeah. That year, I knew, and even just looking at, for all you sports betters, looking at the line, 
I knew the Jets weren't going to win that game, and Fitzpatrick showed his true colors by throwing the crucial pick, actually two of them in the third and fourth quarter. Um, so that just showed his, his true colors. They, they did get 10 wins, um, but look, Revis was another year older though too. Um, Decker was, was out injured last year. You, you hate to make excuses with injuries, but certain guys, their staples, uh, Mangold, Harris, these guys didn't play a full season, which they were known for their health previous years or two. So I just think that and the, the lack of aggressiveness on the, uh, being on the offense and also the, the coaching, though, just overall, uh, their whole scheme, it, it definitely changed. And when you're playing the Patriots twice a year, um, Super Bowl champs, or two, I mean, you know, that's enough said. An improved Dolphins team and an improved Bills team, um, as we, before we get the schedule, just each year, the, the best case scenario for the Jets is to be 500 out of the division, and most of the times they'll probably be, including this year, maybe um, if they're lucky, um, <laughs> one and five or two, or, or two and four. But that's on the best year. But you're paying, playing the Patriots, like I said, the Dolphins, the Bills are always the uh, the odd bowl team, but too, you know, they, they're, they're hot and cold every year. But that year, uh, two years ago, I just knew when the crucial game to make the playoffs, I knew Fitzpatrick. That's why you look at quarterbacks in the league, would he ever win you a Super Bowl? Obviously, the answer is no. And the closest they actually got in the last 10 years was with Sanchez making it to the championship game twice. And again, he had a horrible rookie season, just too many picks. But that was their best uh, best quarterback, unfortunately, over the past 10 years. Nobody will ever forget the butt fumble. No. Sanchez. Unbelievable. Before we go to the schedule, the quarterback's an interesting spot. So again, they have McCann, 38 years old, yeah. it, on a team that this is not, again, they're not going to be very good this year. No. From your standpoint, are they better off playing a guy like McCown, or would you rather see what you have in a guy like Petty or a guy like Hackenberg, guys you've invested picks in, just to see if if the future of the Jets at quarterback is on this roster, or if they're going to have to spend a very high first-round pick next year on some of the guys that are projected to be top five picks next year? Yeah. Would you? How would you? How would you do that? Were, were you? Would you rather see the kids play? Or would you rather? I think you know, so. Shelter them with, from the guys that are around. Right, and, and that's that was a problem with Fitzpatrick even last year. That's it. And then they brought Petty in, well, just like a, a reliever, a pitcher in baseball. And never understood with the football. If the quarterback is going to have an off game, don't throw two or three picks in the first quarter or first half. You could pull him though too. It says it's going to ruin certain guys' confidence. Now Fitzpatrick was a veteran, so I don't think it would affect his confidence. So give a guy like Petty a shot, but he did get a shot towards the end of the year and got decimated. I mean, there was his offensive line didn't protect him though too. So. I agree with you to give the kids a chance. I heard Hackenberg wasn't ready last year. Uh, again, uh, would I have drafted him that high? Probably not. Maybe more of a fourth or fifth round pick instead of second. Same thing with Petty. But I would give Petty probably the better uh, uh, benefit of the doubt and go with him over Hackenberg. But McDowell, though, too, like I said, yeah, just another band-aid, though, too. So it's almost like confidence in either one of their, their rookies or second-year players now. Um, so I agree. I would give them a shot, but you got to have them protected, though, too, to have any shot. They, they might look horrible and feel like Petty did it. Getting sacked left and right. I think year. the I think the thought was to bring in a veteran to eventually, you know, be a backup to these kids. And we all know McNeil's not going to last the season, whether it's for injury or just they're just going to the toilet. We want to see what Hackenberg and Petty have to do. I think that McNeil will not survive the year. I think he's going to play behind these kids and give them veteran leadership. And that's that's what the whole case was. Now, if you look at the schedule, well, like Brian talked about, the the, the the schedule makers made them no favors. Besides the the rough year the Jets are going to have. I mean, you start off with. With two out of the gate, Buffalo, Oakland on the road, and then they come home for Miami, who's you know it's in September, it's not going to be that cold up up here in this area. Then they home for Jacksonville. Um, you know, they do go to Cleveland, that could be a possibility. But then you you go to New England, or you're home for New England. You, you're off to Miami. You play Atlanta. I mean, there's a lot of tough teams on the schedule this year. Near the end of the year, they do get a break to end with New England, but th this is going to be an up and down season for New England. I mean, for, for the Jets this year, and I think it's going to be a rough. One. Be a popular uh, anti-survivor pick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. survivor yeah. pool. Who are the Jets playing? Yeah. Check. A lot of double-digit uh, favoritism. Yeah, the Jets but again, as you even saw last year, again, we saw the Browns play a couple of close games or two, and same thing with the Jets. Yeah. You could see them winning uh, uh, throughout a team, though, too, like uh, against Kansas City, who's not going to be as good as they were last year, I believe, uh, or even like Cleveland, even Jacksonville. The, the defense is still suspect, but. So I said that you always have to be leery. And the Jets, even playing in uh, late in the season, they're playing. Uh, is that the LA Chargers now? They're playing. LA Chargers. They, uh, who, who, who knows? I mean, the Jets have played some years really good on the West Coast against like the Raiders and the Chargers and teams of that nature. Yeah. The Saints could be a shootout, but I don't see the Jets keeping up with them offensively though too. So, um, yeah. but the defense might keep the game. But who knows? Because Breeze is another year year older. But yeah, the schedule definitely isn't favorable to them. And you know, I don't have them winning 
more than a handful of games, unfortunately. But I'm realistic. I'm realistic, Jeff. What, what's a handful to you? Just <laughs> if, I, if, I said, um, if I just said throw like a number like out there, you walk hand or a regular yeah. hand or uh, kind of... less than one hand. Like or... Andre, Andre John had a big yeah. hand. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm going. Um, unfortunately, all my friends, family, and other Jeff fans, uh, I have them at three and thirteen. Okay. Um, as low as not winning a game to one game. As high, the high, I see the ceiling. Five and eleven, maybe six and ten, but that's that's high in the sky. They as we think the Jets are going to be, we know that. So I'm going to ask you a loaded question. Now, obviously, let's assume the quarterback's not on the roster. Okay. Let's assume that, the, that their answer there is not there. Then address it in this draft. Would you rather see this thing be with one of those all-time bad NFL years where they end up getting a high enough pick to get like a Sam Darnold out of USC, a Josh Rosen out of UCLA, where they get a guy that they can build around moving forward? I would say yes, but as you know, if these names that I'll start watching college, I started watching college a little more the last year. But um, guys like that, there's no. If there was another uh, Andrew Luck or Peyton Manning out there, definitely not. Sure. Two. And we know that every year, that's those are you know one every decade or two or so. So again, those guys, those names, I, I'm familiar with them, but are they going to be superstars? I don't know. That's why I don't think. Uh, as Mike, to Mike's point, they, they drafted a quarterback this year in the first round. They went with the best available. Athlete, you know, and the right. See, I don't, I don't think it matters to be honest with you. But guy, I, this team could be oh and whatever. This team needs to get a front office in there that's going to make some picks to make these guys stick. If you do get Josh Rosen, he's the best quarterback in the draft. What happened to the rest of the draft? This team is so far behind the eight ball now that they have to start building for the future. They have to get people in there that are going to accumulate over a couple of years. This isn't going to be a quick process. Jets aren't going to be playoff contenders next year or the year after that. This team has to slowly get back to being a good team in the NFL again. I mean, like I, like we said with Cleveland, with Mike Henshaw on our team, the front office has to make this team better. One person isn't going to make this team good overnight. They have to start setting the seeds. And the Jets need somebody in there, like the coach. They need to keep the coach in there for a period of time now to let him get his system in there. If they blow him out next year, they're back to square one again. And that's a team that they can't they can't keep going. So it's being out of draft picks again in the front office. We could go back to the eighties again, dating myself and the Jets taking Dan Marino. Oh. <laughs> I wish yeah. taking kind of Ryan yeah. over Dan Marino, dude. My yeah. dad still to this day talks and about this, that. What, right. what a different franchise that one player, a franchise quarterback, could right. have made for them though too, uh, when they were semi decent in a couple of years in the eighties though too. But that's one just guy can get you turned around and headed in the right direction, but it's up to the front office to get that team's players in the right direction. That's, and really, the NFL suffers when the teams in New York are not doing very well. I mean, again, that's the biggest market, market in the country. Yeah. Two teams there. Yeah. You know, they're sharing that building with the Giants. The Giants are going to have a pretty good year, in my opinion. So, again, it's it's going to be an ugly season for the Jets. But again, you guys know me. If you're not going to win, lose. For this team, they're better off not winning a game. The worst thing possible for the Jets this year will be for them to end up with like a number two pick and miss out on potentially the franchise quarterback they may cover. You look at some of these teams and what they've had to pay to move up to get guys that really might not be franchise quarterbacks. You really don't know. You look at what the Rams and the Eagles did to go get Jared Goff and Carson Wentz. Wentz is looking like it might work out. Goff, not so much. You look in the draft this year. What Chicago moved up just one spot to get up like, like what, a couple thirds out of four. John Lynch is a genius. To go get Trubisky, <laughs> who was good. I mean, look at look at where Mahomes went. Look at what was paid for yeah, Deshaun yeah. Watson. These, there's a there's a premium there. And if you're going to put a value on what comes out of the season for the Jets, that win total is completely irrelevant. Exactly. They're you, better off. You need that front office yeah. to make the right moves to get this team in the right direction. If you got to move, and I don't know if you guys agree, if you got to move back in the draft. If you're a set, you said number two, you move back to number five and pick up another pick in the first round or another second round pick. Those picks have to count. They have to count. They have to make so, a difference. I'll tell you this. You make up an excellent point. Let's say that they don't believe that Rosen or Darnold or some of these guys are, are, are franchise quarterbacks. Look at the haul that Tennessee got yeah. for the, for the, and, and, and the, you know, the Eagles trade. The, 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 the picks that, these, that you're able to get in value, right? So for a Jets that have, a Jets team with so many holes, right? If you're picking number one, you can get multiple first round picks that will help you really yeah. build the team moving forward. Either way, yeah. winning doesn't help this team this year no. at all. If you want to get a pick at the end of the first round or even in the second round for that quarterback sure. and move him along and get him ready for two, because Hackenberg and Petty, as much as we want to throw them in and say they're the future, they're not ready this year. Correct. They're Maybe not be ready next year, but if you can get a guy drafted next year who's got some pedigree, who can learn in the next couple of years, then work on everything else and get that quarterback ready to go 
for when your team is fully developed. It's it's going to be a process. But historically, you, what you guys have both said is true. With the front office, the time time the Jets have proven that they botched up first round picks and, and just historically, you could go through the last 20 years. Well, obviously, just, they're looking just, to sell tickets too, but it, yeah. it's got to be a process. It, it it's got to be a suffer season maybe and head in the right direction. It's going to be a suffer season regardless. That's right. the thing. Like, they don't really have a choice here. You, so you better get something out right. of it. My point is you can't keep having multiple ones. They, yeah. they, even with all those veterans that I mentioned that they cut this, this past offseason, yeah. they still would have been, at best, a 500 team. Right. So last year, with all those veterans, they had a 500 right. season right. too, and, and an easier schedule. So, you know, it's going to be definitely another tough year as well. Like I said, it just I know last year was a I looked forward to watching football, just go off on a quick tangent. It's only one game a week. It's not like basketball, uh, hockey, or football, uh, baseball. I was watching more Eagle games and getting more agitated at Eagles games and their play calling than the Jets. I was more laughing at Jets, and that's yeah. the way the season. And that's, unfortunately, in 42 now, just to watch the Jets since the early 80s, it's, this last year was one of the most frustrating seasons to watch. You know? and that was frustrating. Wait till you see this one. But yeah. I will, I, I'll end on a good note. I'll end on a good note. The one Jet, I think, for all you fantasy guys, it might be a guy to look for in your fantasy drafts. It's Bill All Pal. This team's going to be down in games a yeah. lot. You'll get carries. And they're just going to. He's going to get garbage time, uh -huh. yards, and, and probably a couple scores. Yeah. That's probably the only guy I think outside of maybe a new one. I don't yeah. really know. Yeah, but. or fourth tape they throw out the backfield. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's receiving out he's of the backfield. Yeah. <laughs> so it's I mean, the age, man. We will see. It should be a very interesting season for the Jets. But first of all, or lastly, I like to thank. Matt Zubrell for coming in studio today. We don't usually have a lot Absolutely. of guys come in studio. Come in studio and talk just today, Matt. Really appreciate it. Uh, one last thing. I, uh, I brought my other real team, though, too, that uh, oh, we're not ready for that oh, season yet, though, too. So that would be maybe well, another time. This guy. A little, little, little side note on Matt. Did, had a son. Congratulations. Yes. Thank you, Matt. Beautiful. Beautiful. And, and an Islander fan with a Ranger uh, last name. I was going to say, the, so. the poor kid that was going to be an Islanders, a Mets, and a Jets fan. That's that's a hell of a, a lot of time on a lot of time on the house. And let's not confuse Matt Zuccarello with one of my favorite people in the world, Matt Zuccarello of the Rangers. Yeah. I, a lot yeah. shorter, a lot more money. You know, what are you gonna do? Wow. It is what it is. Only get the hair and sports box. Anyway, thank you for watching. We really appreciate it. Remember you can always get us on social media. Absolutely. This is one of 32 previews we're doing for the NFL season to get you ready for what's gonna be an exciting NFL season everywhere except for New York. So Check us out on Twitter and Facebook at Sports Box Show. And, of course, check out our YouTube channel. Please subscribe if you haven't yet. We really do appreciate it. Thank you for watching. We really appreciate it. Make sure you watch Week 11 because the Bucks play the Jets, and it's going to be right here. The Bucks stops here. It's going to be, yeah, if they lose that game, it is going to be yeah, like this, it, isn't it? Yeah. You might see me on the watch this week. So, yeah. anyway, thank you for watching. We appreciate it. And that Sports Box, the only thing that matters is absolutely right here and not the Jets. Thank you very much, Steve. One, two, three. Yeah. Don't forget to subscribe.